Hello guys, in this video I will talk about the price for charging in the commercial charging networks in Norway. I will only talk about Fortum Charge and Drive and Gurren Contact. So we have BKK which is smaller and then we also have Ionity and Circle K is coming but I feel like these are either too small or not fully developed yet. So I might make a follow-up video later about these other networks. Fortum and Gurren Contact, they are the biggest one in Norway. They cover well, I guess around 99% of the fast chargers and, and semi-fast chargers in Norway. If you look at the map here, this is the map of uh, the chargers in um, in the Grand Contact network in Norway. They have fairly good spread all over Norway and uh, there are places, for instance, between Trondheim and uh, Bode where they have good coverage, where Fortum doesn't cover it. And also, uh, Gyrgyz Contact have very good coverage on the western side of Norway, around like Møre and Ålesund around there. So that's when it it counts to have Gyrgyz Contact uh, chip or access to it. And then as for Fortum, they have way bigger networks. You see, uh, they have also all over Norway, but also in Finland and Sweden, and not in Denmark, but also in uh, Iceland and some other parts of Europe. But at least for Norway, they have the best uh, the best coverage around the bigger cities, but also pretty much all over Norway. You see, like lots of them. These are a combination of fast chargers and the semi semi fast chargers, and especially around the big cities, they have really good coverage for them. And look here, for instance, Oslo. They have good coverage uh, all over Oslo, also in this inner city. But during uh, the talk, they don't have too much coverage in the inner city, but more outside the cities. And uh, Gyrgyz Contact and Fortum, they also have their own uh, mobile app. It works for iOS and Android. And you can pay, uh, there are several options. You can pay with credit card or you can pay with SMS or RFID. Now, uh, which method should you choose? Which payment method should you choose? Um, Norwegians, I recommend them to order RFID or register it in the, from the, you know, you get the chip from Elbilfreni in the black one. You can register that one and then you can use that one to pay, uh, but they will bill you. Uh, as for foreigners, I think the easiest for you is to use the app and then register um, a credit card and then just pay via the app. So it will work for most of you guys. I mean, you can also try to order a chip, a chip and then use that one. I, I know some foreigners do that. And um, uh, as for SMS, I don't recommend it because it's a bit slow. You have to like type it and then um, these guys, uh, they charge you more uh, per minute if you use SMS. They don't want you to use them, actually. I've talked to Fortnum about this. They, all, they even thought about either, either price it really high, like three, four times higher, or just remove that paying option. Now there's one uh, one thing though that they, these chargers they have they actually they have a, a, a 3G 4G connection so from time to time that connection could be down and it means that the charge is offline so if you come there and you want to charge via the app or SMS then it won't work but if you have an RFID the charger can store about uh, well, almost uh, 100,000 RFID tags so. Um, the, it has a local whitelist, so if you use the RFID, even if the charge is offline and your RFID is in that uh, whitelist, then it will work for you. You can start and stop charging. So that's one advantage of having an RFID tag. All right, let's talk about the Fortum uh, pricing. So in most places, if you charge on the 50 kilowatt DC fast charger, it will cost 2.5 nook per minute. There are some places where it will cost 4 nook per minute, but we don't... We don't want to concentrate too much about them. Just mention it that it is there. Uh, and as for the HPCs, the, the charges that we live are over 100 kilowatts, it will cost you 3.5 nook per minute. And then as for slower charging, the AC charging, uh, 22 kilowatt AC will cost 1,000, uh, one nook per minute. And uh, there are, of course, this area that I also talk about, those expensive areas, they they will cost uh, actually 3.5 to 4 nook per minute, really expensive. Uh, as for uh, slower charging, uh, we also have some 3.7 to 11 kilowatt AC. The price on this virus, so I will not mention it, but it's like some places are free and some places cost per minute or per kilowatt hour. So lots of different pricing models there. So you almost have to look where it matters to you and then see there. 
And then, okay, uh, Gnome Talk pricing is uh, pretty similar to Fortum. Uh, it's also the same, 2.5 nuke per minute for 50 kilowatt, and then the 100 plus kilowatt uh, DC far charger is uh, 3.5 nuke per minute. So that's good, uh, similar price model. But when it comes to AC, semi-fast charging, it's different because, um, and also somewhat confusing, because they don't uh, count per minute. Well, it, they count per 15 minute, uh, but, it costs you a 0.75 nook per ki uh, times kilowatt each 15 minute you start. So um, I had to show you some examples for you to understand. Most people, they don't know, they are really confused about this, how it works. So if you have, uh, let's say, an Ionic or, uh, or a Leaf where you can get 7.4 kilowatt. Now, some manufacturers, they, they use the 6.6 the .6 kilowatt, which is after charging loss, but basically it's 32 amps, 7.4 kilowatt. Now, uh, Gurung Kotak, they will, they will measure your average charging power throughout the whole charging session. So if you assume that you can charge at a steady 7.4 kilowatt, you see that the, the price for that charging will be uh, 22 nook per hour. Whereas um, for them, they charge you uh, 60 nook per hour, regardless of how much power you pull from the plug. Now let's see another example. Uh, if you charge a 22 kilowatt, if you have a Tesla or an e-tron, uh, then it's higher price. So then it will be 66 nook per hour. So it's actually slightly more expensive than um, uh, for them. But um, okay, I have to count one thing though, is that um, the price uh, in general, you can see that um, uh, it's three nook per kilowatt hour because you can take the 0.75 times four and then you get the price. But this, this price is before charging loss. So you can't compare them directly with the DC fast charging because the DC, I'll come back to that soon, is uh, after charging loss. But um, you see that um, for Fortum, it has a fixed price of Fortum. It's it's the best deal if you have fast onboard charger like you have in, in the old Tesla Model S with 22 kilowatt onboard charger. Or if you get the e-tron, well, nowadays you can't get it yet. It's only 11 kilowatt, but 22 kilowatt. Or if you have a Zoe with 22 kilowatt onboard charger, then that's a good deal on Fortum. But if you go to Grand Contact, I mean, sorry, if you, uh, um, if you have a Leaf, for instance, then you can't utilize 22 kilowatt then it's it's a, actually a pretty bad deal to charge it uh, on AC on on a leaf then you should use current contact all right let's look at uh, the price for per kilowatt hour because that kind of matters and um, so here we see a big ass table and um, I tried to list some of the cars I didn't list all the model here but um, the e-golf and the Tesla with the smaller battery packs they have lower nominal voltage and that's why you actually get slightly slower speed on the on the 50 kilowatt fast charger. So uh, for them, it will cost about 3.75 nook per kilowatt hour. And then if you have uh, most of these other EVs like Ionic, Leaf, Soul, you know, uh, you will get around 45 kilowatt on average. So that means that the price per kilowatt hour is lower for these cars. But uh, keep in mind, in, in the previous example, I mentioned that. Um, uh, when you charge on AC, it will cost 3 nook per kilowatt hour, but after charging loss, it will be about 3.5 nook per kilowatt hour. So you have to keep that in mind if you want to save money and charge on AC versus charging on DC. In most cases, it pays off to charge on the EDC because you also save time. And then iPace e-tron is a little bit special because uh, they have higher nominal voltage than the other cars. So that means that they can actually push out 50 kilowatt from this 50 kilowatt fast charger. So you charge, it's, it's slightly cheaper to charge on those cars, but those cars are also kind of thirsty. And as for Ionic, uh, now we move over to the HPC. The HPC means high power charger. It's the chargers that can deliver more than 100 kilowatt. And Ionic is a little bit special because it can utilize um, those HPCs, even if it has a small battery pack. So uh, on average, you will get about 65 uh, kilowatt, and that means uh, good price. So if you consider you know, charging on uh, an HPC with the Ionic, it pays off, yeah. But if you try to charge, let's say, a Leaf on the HPC, it's a bad deal because one, you occupy the charger, uh, there could be an Ionic or some other cars that want to use that charger, and two, you pay a higher price and you don't charge faster. Uh, Kona Nero, you see, uh, charges faster, but only up until 50 
uh, 7%. So you have to be kind of strict. And also, Kona Inior will so called cold gate. So in winter, if the battery is not warm enough, then you won't get the speed. But at least, as long as you get the good speed in summer or whatever, then you see it's a good deal to charge on this uh, fast charger, given that you don't kind of overcharge. Because if it starts throttling, then the price per kilowatt hour is uh, higher. And then it get better and better. So IPs and uh, Tesla, uh, at least if you have a Tesla with a, a CCS adapter, you will usually get about 90 kilowatt on average. So that's also a good price per kilowatt hour. You see that uh, it's a good deal to charge on HPC versus the 50 kilowatt fast charger. And then uh, we have the Tesla with the 90 or 100 pack. They also charge even faster. And the best one here is of course e-tron. It can average about 140 kilowatt during the charging session all the way to 80 percent so <laughs> for e-tron it's a bargain to charge on the hpcs but i talked to fortum about this also about um, because they they price it at 3.5 nook per minute and they said they, they are not sure how to do this because <laughs> you see here in the table that there's so so wide span between uh, between ionic and e-tron in the average uh, kilowatt so uh, how do you price it to be fair? You know? And you can't just price it per kilowatt hours because then some smart ass might sit there too long and charge to 100% or 95% and while other people are waiting to get that spot. Yeah, um, and by the way, um, which, I mean, how fast does your car charge? Uh, I have a tip for you. If you go to Fastned and then uh, search for your car in that uh, search, uh, place and you will see uh, most likely your car will be there. For instance, here is uh, an i3, and you can see on the graph how fast you normally charge if it during optimal uh, conditions, and then you know roughly when you should unplug. It is at 80% or 65% or whatever. So look there is really useful. Uh, and also, m most of the more no like um, modern EVs nowadays, they will show you charging speed inside the cars. You can see how many kilowatt you're pulling, and if it drops, uh, then it might be time to to leave. So, um, but uh, some cars uh, won't show you charging speed. So, uh, one way to try to find out how fast you're charging is to look at the at the charger. Most chargers will show you how many kilowatt hours you have received, and also how long you've been charging. And if you take, for instance, this example here, we've been here uh, about 41 minutes and we gained 24 kilowatt hours. So do the quick math and you see that we have a 35 kilowatt average. So no, this one, in this case, uh, he was charging faster in the beginning, but then he started throttling. This was a leaf, by the way, charging here. No, wait, and it was an EMA 200, it's basically a leaf. But um, uh, the EMA 200 was charging faster in the beginning. So if we did the calculation, let's say at the 20 minute mark, you will probably see that we were charging at uh, over 40 kilowatt. And then if you do another checkpoint later, you will see that uh, it drops. So most likely uh, we are only receiving about 20 something kilowatt towards the end. So that's also an indication that you should unplug and get the heck out of there. Because um, if, you, if you get 20 kilowatt versus 40, then you're basically paying twice the price because you pay per minute now this is just I said you know I mentioned this is just an estimation because there is some heat loss in the process when you charge the car uh, not all of that goes into the value some of it it's lost in heat but it's a close enough appro approximation yeah uh, and then for another time you will also see that you won't get that uh, optimal speed for some reason and that is most in, in most cases it's because the battery is too cold so if you have too cold battery you won't get full speed you might get half speed you might even get lower than half speed so yeah that is covered in some of the other videos I made so yeah you can try to check it out all right, I will show us talk a little bit about Grundkontakt's volume discount because it's somewhat unique for for that one. So you see the discount level here is that um, in, you start with 0% and then the more you charge per month, the more discount you get. So this is really great. Uh, I, I think actually many uh, many customers, they choose Grundkontakt because they have this discount. So typically if you charge for about half an hour, you will it will cost you 75 nook so in one month if you have two fast charging session that's enough to get you 10% so great deal right and um, 
Uh, the thing is that once you hit, for instance, if you hit 150 nook in one month, uh, for the next one from 150 to 300 nook, that's actually the discounted price. So you can't just take 300 nook divided by 2.5 and think, okay, you can, you only have to charge for 120 minutes and then you're good. No, you actually you have to charge for 127 minutes. So. In a way, it's almost like it's harder and harder to achieve the, the highest one, which is 40% uh, discount. Uh, but I guess it depends how your charging habits are. But um, I think most people, they can achieve about uh, 10 to 20% discount. And that's that's a, that's a nice deal. Yeah. And um, uh, actually, if you have 40% discount, it would be uh, just 1.5 nook per minute versus 2.5 nook per minute. Um, for them, unfortunately, they don't have any volume discount, so um, I hope they implement it one day because I think many people, I mean, if they do it, uh, many people would actually uh, try to stay with Fortum because they have good coverage and it's just a tipping point there. So, but okay, uh, I should also mention that there are a few other uh, deals if you you if you are um, an electricity customer at Luz or Fortum, they also they also have electricity for the home. Then you also get some additional discount, but I don't cover that in this video. So um, to summarize this, uh, I would say that um, Fortum has the best coverage and also the best app, mobile app, whereas Grand Contact they have the best coverage in some of the western side in Norway and on also some of the places I mentioned between Trondheim and Buda uh, and also uh, it has the volume discount so many people care about that and they they actually choose Grön Kontakt instead of Fortum because of that little discount and uh, also Grön Kontakt has cheaper uh, price for AC charging if your car is not equipped with two powerful onboard charger and uh, last thing I should mention is that um, Grand Contact um, they don't have much plans about uh, expanding the HPC network the high power charger they have a very few of them but for them they are more aggressive on the expanding HPC you know? so they, they will have more and more HPC around the big cities and also in, on traveling corridors between the big cities so they are really on, on the edge there of expanding they want to be competing with um, Ionity and uh, I guess uh, Circle K's network yeah so um, it's a long video but I try to explain how it works and I don't want to explain too much about how this works in Germany or Italy or France because they have their own network, they have their own pricing model but at least I explained to you how it works in Norway. So um, yeah, as usual, uh, thank you for watching and I hope this was useful for you. So uh, talk to you later.